Hey, what's up everybody? I am here to talk once again about the transit of Saturn squaring the planet of Neptune. Uh, this is a part two. I just filmed another one yesterday and there's just so much to say about this topic. So many examples to give that I feel like there, there's just much more that I want to say. So I'm doing a part two. So anyway, um, once again, for those who don't know, um, the planet Saturn is about structure and discipline and order. Doing things in a disciplined way, it's about hard work, it's about um, things that are produced uh, tangibly and materially uh, based on hard work and it's all about tradition, it's about things that have been done over and over again for centuries or for years to prove that it's the right way. So that's the energy of Saturn and it's traveling through the energy of Sagittarius right now until 2018. And Sagittarius um, is a, it's a pretty happy sign usually. It's about optimism and faith in things, but the faith part is also um, you know, organized religion, really having faith that everything will be okay because you believe in a higher power. It has to do with also politics in a way. Uh, Sagittarius is about travel. It's about higher education, you know, educating yourself at a high level like college. It's all about the truth, the blunt truth. It doesn't really hold back. It just, whatever it sees is the truth, it'll, it'll just bow, you know, just spit it out like hot fire, you know. And then Neptune. Neptune is a planet of the divine, divine spirituality, divine creativity. It's like, it rules the unseen world. The things that you feel intuitively and that you connect to intuitively uh, without always being able to explain it or produce uh, tangible proof of it. Neptune energy is like that, that hippie energy. It just wants everybody to get along with one another, love one another, and accept one another. It rules like art, dancing, movies. It's also compassion. It's also seeing the greater good in everyone and everything which can sometimes be deceptive, you know, especially self-deceptive. So that's the energy of Neptune, and it's in the sign of Pisces. It's a sign that it rules. So Neptune and Pisces pretty much mean the same thing. So we've got these two energies, and they are at an angle, which calls it's called a square. Um, that means it's a challenging angle. It, it means they're looking at each other, and they're having this conversation like... So have you taken any classes for this art of yours? Where did you go to school? Schooling? I didn't go to any school. I, I'm a natural at what I do. I've got years of hands-on experience, plus a deep love and passion for my art. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, what an uneducated fool. Really? <laughs> Just because you don't see a paper or a title means that I'm incompetent? <laughs> Well, you just seem like the type that'll believe that anything is real. Well, you'll only believe what's in front of you. Naive, hippie, narrow-minded. <laughs> so that's pretty much what it is for, for these two energies to speak to one another right now. So this transit is at its highest potency right now, right now as I'm filming this, in, at the end of June in 2016. And it will continue to be at a high potency um, it'll kind of fade off a little bit and then it's going to come back to an exact square again in September 2016. It'll start fading off, but it's going to continue through the end through up until about December 2016. So for those asking, that's about how long it lasts. But right now, at this point in time um, in our history, this is, um, it's, it's really strong, you know, and you're going to see themes. Um, I mentioned a lot of themes in my last video you know, people who are more traditional, challenging those who are non-traditional, who don't have a lot of structure in their lives. So uh, some other things I wanted to mention why I'm doing a part two. Saturn is about time. It's, it's father time. It's uh, Kronos, you know, which is time. And so it's about doing things on time in a timely manner consistently. And then Neptune dissolves so it's kind of free. It's, it, Neptune rules the oceans, right? It's like the deepest water. So it doesn't like to be contained. It just likes to flow freely. So when it comes to time management, the energy of Neptune itself and Pisces itself doesn't really care much for it. They like to go with feeling. They tune in to an outer source of energy, um, which means they tune out the world, the, the earthly plane. They have to tune it out in order to really channel their feelings, you know? So time is not really something that Neptunian 
people really care too much about, like people who were born under the sign of Pisces, or have uh, personal planets, meaning Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Venus, in an aspect to Neptune, which would give their personality a Neptunian kind of flavor, or have similar characteristics of people born under the sign of Pisces, you know. So Neptunian people really don't care too much for time. Saturn, Father Time, really does care about time. So when the two energies are squaring each other, there are themes that are coming up regarding time management. How are you managing your time? Are you structuring your time? Are you making the schedules and following them, you know? And if not, then Saturn gives repercussions. It teaches you hard lessons. It's like, look, if you're not following this, if you're not staying on task and on time with things, I'm going to check you, I'm going to smack your hand with the ruler, and I'm going to make you follow the rules. A prime example of this in um, pop culture right now, uh, a couple months back, Lauren Hill, and if you don't know who Lauren Hill is, she is a phenomenal singer, okay? Um, she's a very soulful woman, and in Lauren Hill's own birth chart she was born with the moon in Sagittarius in conjunction with Neptune in Sagittarius so if the moon is your perception and how you emotionally feel and and your filter through which you see the world Neptune is right next to it it kind of puts like a fog over your perception um, to where you want to see the greater good in everyone and you just go with the flow when it comes to your feelings and, and how you react to things. Um, it's in the moment and it has to channel you know the, the right energy in order to feel right in order to take action. So there's an issue that came up a couple months ago with her and her time management. Uh, her fans were really angry okay and things were coming out in the public in the media that were saying that, fan, fans were saying that for years and years, they would go to see her concerts and she is habitually late. She's late and, you know, people wait in line to see her and then she'll give a performance that is less than, you know, that they know is not to her greatest potential and they'll be left disappointed. Well, when Mars was in Sagittarius a couple months ago, along with Saturn in Sagittarius, these two planets were attacking her moon, which is her feelings, and attacking her Neptune, which is like, you know, it just wants to free flow, right? So Mars and Saturn are represented by her fans, okay? And she was under the attack. Her time management, or lack thereof, under attack. What did she have to say? Well, she said pretty much something along the lines of, the energy wasn't right for me. You know, the alignment, I wasn't able to align my energy with the energy of the moment. That's why I couldn't give my best performance. That's why, you know, I had to wait and, and, until the timing was right to do my shows. Well, her fans are like, no, boo-boo. Okay, you want to talk about time? I took the time out of work or my family life to come see you perform. I spent money. Okay, hard-earned money I could have spent on something else to come see you. I booked a babysitter, took time out of someone else's schedule so they could take, so I can take time to come see you. You want to talk about time? Let's talk about time. And she was just under the attack on her Facebook and everything. So this is a prime example of Saturn squaring Neptune. And as a matter of fact, Saturn was sitting, you know, on her moon and her Neptune, teaching her lessons about Neptunian things, which is you need to learn how to harness your energy, okay? You need to learn how to get yourself right with whatever the energy is that's going on. You need to learn how to do that. Saturn, his motto is, you gonna learn today. He teaches hard lessons, so she had to really, really learn about time management. Because Saturn sees people who are, you know, more Neptunian and free with their time as being really irresponsible. And Saturn likes to reward those who work hard, who comply with the rules and, you know, follow schedules. So if not, hey, you know what, your work, the thing that you love doing can be snatched away like that. That goes for people of all different types of uh, walks of life, you know, whatever business you're involved in, whatever passion you have. If you're not structuring it, if you're not following the rules at your job, for example, okay, because Saturn is all about the job, right? The career. If you're not following the rules, if you're just kind of la, 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 like, for example, if you're late to work all the time, if you're just kind of do, 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 you know, at your job, then Saturn is looking at you like, what is this fool doing? They are not doing their job. Mm -mm, I'm going to have to check them right now. So 
This is something that, of course, always comes up all the time, people. I understand that. But with this energy being so strong, it's like more of a common theme amongst the collective. Now, another thing, like as I mentioned, structuring your business. Neptune is your artistic abilities, the creative abilities you were given from the divine, you know. And um, if you're just kind of floating around being a hippie like, hey, I don't care about anything, I don't need to structure anything, I just float around and I just do, and I make money whenever, you know, and I, I, I don't really keep track of it, whatever. Saturn Square Neptune is asking the artist, hey, you know what, put some structure into your business. Put some structure in, advertise, manage your budget, come up with some rates, some fees, a schedule, something to bring order to it, to bring some discipline. You know, you can't just be a freelancer and say, yeah, I, I charge whatever, whatever you feel like I'm worth, you know, and then people are going to try to, like I mentioned in the last video, try to lowball you, try to swindle you, try to manipulate. So you need to put structure into your business if you're in a Neptunian field, like artistry or spirituality. Another example of um, Saturn Neptune square right now is, you know, Neptune is a uh, dissolvement of boundaries, and that means the boundaries between the self and other people, which means that on the negative side, you can give yourself away too freely, whether that is in love or with compassionate actions, you know, just, oh yeah, here, give, 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 and people take advantage of you, or with yourself, um, like your soul, your body, your time. Um, you know, Neptune doesn't, doesn't see boundaries there, it just gives, right? Well, another example, the guy that's in New York who fathered 22 children so far, um, who's like a donor or whatever, and he just wants to give himself out to the world by freely making these children, you know, and for free, he doesn't charge them. Well, I don't know this guy's birth date, but they say he's 40 years old. So I did some ninja astrologer math, and I figured out that he has Neptune in Sagittarius. He was born during that generation. And his Neptune is probably around like 11, 12, 13 degrees of Neptune, somewhere in there where Saturn is sitting at right now in the same sign, okay? Saturn is, is around those degrees of Sagittarius currently. So Saturn is sitting on his Neptune in his chart. How he gives himself away freely, which is by, you know, spreading his seed around. Now the stories come out in the news. Now his wife is upset. Um, women are hitting him up for child support. And I, I think the child support thing is a little bit of an older, older thing in the past. But it's coming to light now, you know. So he's getting taught a lesson about giving his body away, his seed away too freely. You need to be careful with that. From what I've read so far, um, he still plans on continuing doing this. But... You know, as the story continues to develop and, and progress, um, who knows what can happen with this story in the future. But um, he is being, in a way, taught a lesson and come down upon about his Neptunian ways of giving away too freely and dissolving the boundaries between himself, his human body, and other human bodies. Now, the last example I'm going to give of a current event that has gone on that's an example of the Saturn and Neptune square. Um, it's a little more touchy, uh, so I was, you know, debating whether or not if I should speak about it and mention, mention it. But I think a little bit of time has passed to where, you know, it, it's um, still sensitive, but it can be spoken about. And that is the recent shooting that happened, the massacre that happened in Florida. Um, bless the souls of those individuals. So Saturn and Sagittarius can represent strict religion, strict um, religious practices. And if you can recall in the story, the shooter, you know, he claims to be of a specific um, religious group, uh, religious ex extremist group. Um, Saturn can be extreme at times with in Sagittarius with religion and really say, no, this is how it's always been, how it should be. Anything outside of this needs to be eliminated or checked in some sort of way or taught a lesson in some sort of way because this belief system is the only way, the right way, you know, the disciplined way. And if you're undisciplined and if you're not following this way, that means you're undisciplined and you need to be disciplined. That is the negative extreme side of Saturn and Sag. Well, the shooter, he definitely demonstrated that part of this energy that can be um, pretty dark, you know. And then the people that were victims, 
are prime examples of Neptunian people. They were free spirits. They live a lifestyle that is not really um, conventional. It's non-conventional. A lot of them were creative people. They were just trying to dance and have a good time. A lot of them really enjoyed dancing and the art and they just wanted to be free. Free spirits to be themselves, right? So here comes this guy totally disagreeing with them, saying that they need to be taught a lesson about how free they are with themselves, you know, how they dissolve the boundaries between gender, okay? Saturn doesn't like dissolved boundaries that Neptune presents, so what did he do? He took some very extreme action that's very unfortunate. Um, it's still a sad story that pulls at my heartstrings personally, uh, because I'm a very Uranian person, a universal person, and I believe that um, I'm more on the Neptunian side of things too, of life. Although I understand the Saturnian side, I'm more on the Neptune side of, you know what, if you don't believe in something that someone else does, just leave them be, okay? Let them be themselves, let them be free, you know, as long as they're not bothering you personally, coming up to you and hurting you, just let them be themselves. Let them be the free bird and fly, you know, if they want to be a colorful bird and, and wear all kinds of co crazy colors or dress a certain way or express himself in a certain way. If you don't like it, turn your head, walk away, leave them be. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my part two. Um, I don't know if I'll do a part three because ideas just keep coming up and coming up to me of um, examples of how this energy is playing out right now because it's so potent at this time. But like I said, it's gonna start fading out a little bit um, towards the end of the year. And, um, but it's still going to be a common theme, you know, through the end of 2016. So once again, you know, just stand up for what you believe in. And if you don't believe in something that someone else believes in, you don't have to try to teach them a lesson. You know, I know that the lesson here is also don't believe everything that you see or that you hear. Don't be naive, but you know what? Just be smart about things and be true to yourself and let other people be true to themselves. All right. Well, take care, you guys. I'll see you guys in my next video, whenever that will be. <laughs> Take care. Peace.